Disclaimer. This episode was recorded before LeBron James publicly endorsed Kamala Harris. At the time of the recording, we discussed how he and other prominent athletes had chosen to stay out of the political spotlight, which appeared to be a shift from previous election cycles. Please keep in mind that some of the statements made during this conversation reflect that situation at the time of the recording and may not account for recent developments. Thank you. Have you noticed the biggest names in sports are suddenly silenced about politics in this election? Is this a new phase of shut up and dribble? If you don't remember, shut up and dribble was a phrase that came from Laura Ingram in Fox News. So keep the political commentary to yourself, or as someone once said, shut up and dribble. Are athletes choosing to step back, or is it something else that's keeping them quiet? In this episode, I am joined by Logic and Reason as we dive into why athletes are choosing to step out of the political spotlight and what the silence really says about the power of influence free thought and shifting let's go Just to speak about the athletes that are not supporting uh candidates right so mm-hmm. like last presidential election i mean we literally had lebron james and donald trump beefing with each other like in real time so we don't have that anymore like lebron james didn't put his name behind no candidate um, not too many athletes are getting behind any candidates. They may speak about voting, but they're not speaking about who you should vote for. They should say you just go out and vote. So I noticed mm-hmm. a shift when it comes to athletes in that space. Yeah, and, and I think part of it, too, um, I think there's a lot of factors at this point in this particular election. I mean, you had I, I think the, the issues that happened with Kyrie Irving are relevant to this. Yeah, you know, uh, he had you know, he went out and said. The things against the vaccine and then uh he he didn't make a documentary but he watched a documentary about the black <laughs> no, Hebrew rights and no, all of a sudden he, he posted a picture of the like the, the the photo of the documentary that's all he did yeah he didn't say what it was he just posted the picture or a link and that was it and then got all this all this heat right yeah uh and and so for i think for for some folks they might have seen that it's like man i don't want anything to do with that like that's he ended up having to go to a different team. And Mark Cuban has said on record that he's cool with all that. Like, he's not, you know, I'm not mm-hmm. concerned about those types of things. It, it reminds me of an old saying I heard where, you know, you're free until you start to exercise your rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and then, then all of a sudden, you know, you start realizing, oh, yeah, the freedom thing is actually not real. Um, so I think some some have to do with that. I think the other part of it, too, is this, this election is very gendered. You know, like... Uh, a lot of men are going on the Trump side. A lot of women are going on the Harris side. Yeah. And I think a lot of the athletes are like, ooh, you know, maybe secretly they might be for Trump. I mm-hmm. don't want to go out and say that. And so I'm just going to, you know, stay low key, not bring too much attention to myself, go to the ballot box, handle my business and kind of move forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and so because because I look at a lot of the celebrities and it is Beyonce, it's Taylor Swift. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's a lot of women. Uh, really Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, Magic is on the yeah, Harris team, but outside of Magic, oh, I who who who's it really out there like that? So, I, I mean, as far as so. athletes, we have Magic Johnson. Um, of course, I don't know if you like Steve Kerr, the coach of the Golden State Warriors. He's like very liberal. Okay. Um, yeah. Of course, uh, what's the other coach that's very, very liberal? Um, Greg Popovich. So he's like another yep. one that's very liberal. Um, oh. Candace Parker, but we'll go back to women. Candace Parker, who yeah. played for the, um, I think she just retired for the Aces. Mm-hmm. She's another one that's very on it. Um, Chris Paul, believe it or not, he's an advocate for Kamala Harris. So there oh. are some people. Yeah, there's some people, but small pockets. Not like how it was last time. Like, you don't have LeBron James on the Harris campaign trail, or you don't have, say, like a Colin Kaepernick, you know, somebody like that on the Harris campaign trail who have like a real big political standing in the sports aspect. Not this time around. Like, Chris well, Paul. Well, that would be kind of hard, though, for, I mean, just, just to kind of hone in on Colin Kaepernick, that'd be very difficult because of her specific record. You know, I'd, it would kind of go against what he was, you know, what he was all about and what his message was. Yeah, but Kyle Kaepernick probably ready to um, get back in the league. He he'll say anything yes. to anybody <laughs> just to get back in the yes. league. 
Yeah, um, somebody said Spike Lee. Spike Lee is not an athlete, so I guess he's a, a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, but it just it's very Look interesting to that. see the new shift. So that's why I was saying, like, this episode is going to be like, um, I guess, Shut Up and Dribble, the return of Shut Up and Dribble. Because okay. during that time when, um, what's her name? I think it was Kelly Ingram. Ingram, I think yep. that's her name. Kelly Ingram. Fox News. Yeah, Fox News. Yes. She came out and said to LeBron, won't you shut up and dribble? Look, there might be a cautionary lesson in LeBron for kids. This is what happens when you attempt to leave high school a year early to join the NBA. And it's always unwise to seek political advice from someone who gets paid $100 million a year to bounce a ball. Oh, and LeBron and Kevin... You're great players, but no one voted for you. Millions elected Trump to be their coach. So keep the political commentary to yourself, or as someone once said, shut up and dribble. And that yep. sparked a whole brand for LeBron of more than an athlete. And a lot of these athletes did start coming out to be more than an athlete, but now it's like they're now reverting back to shut up and dribbling. So that's why I kind of like, I want the episode to be about that, if that makes sense, but I also want to yeah. talk about the celebrities that are endorsing candidates and the reaction that the um, public is giving them, like a Ricky Smiley, like a D.L. Hughley, like those folks that that just kind of getting um, that now, that backlash for they un they blindly support. Let me ask you a question about that. So, because mm -hmm. I, I I remember a lot of people were coming out. Um, and speaking on that, and Richard Sherman kind of pops up in my head as the loudest voice during that time. It, was that a a thing about defending LeBron, or was that about you know being more vocal? I think during that time, it was about just we have an opinion. I want to be heard. I want to be taken seriously more than just being an athlete. I want to be. Um, you know, I have a voice. I'm not just this dumb jock. I, I am somebody who is well-informed about these things, and I want to have the conversation about these things. So I think that's what the shut up and dribble or more than an athlete was about. But now, like I said, I feel like it's reverting back to just let me go hoop, let me go on the field and play football, let me do whatever I want to do and just be known for that. I don't want to be in the mix of this no more because it's not good for business. Yeah, and, and and that's part of the reason why I asked that question because you know if it was this for the hypothetical, let's let's say if it was really just about hey you know why are you attacking my brother like this? You know he has a right to say what he wants to say and and mm -hmm. things of that nature, and he he represents a community. Then I could see once that kind of that time passes, people kind of revert back to what they were doing before because they weren't really trying to be a voice. You know they weren't really yeah. trying to. They just they saw someone being attacked. And like, hey, no, nah, that's that's not gonna work for me. Versus, if it was truly about, you know, we have something to say. After that incident happened, I would, I would imagine, I would still see people on a consist consistent basis. You know, yeah. If when something comes up, we're speaking on it. And it might also just be exhaustion, because I, I remember specifically the NBA during COVID. You know, they had the whole Black Lives Matter stuff, mm -hmm. extremely vocal, right? That the jerseys changed. All these different things. Yep. Yep. And so, you know, maybe it's like, okay, we did a, we did a lot for several years. Maybe it's a, it's a time for us to be like, all right, let me just let me take a breather. Mm -hmm. Although this is a really, this is a really heated election. So I don't, I mean, sometimes you just can't take that breather. But, yeah. Um, I mean, you got, you can't, it's like being, you can't be half pregnant. You know what I'm saying? Either you're pregnant or you're not. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, if you're going to be this this voice, this advocate for whatever it is that you're pushing for, whether it is Harris or Trump or Stein or West, whatever uh, president you elect, um, candidate that you like, you should be ten toes down and speak on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't now mm -hmm. just, you know, like Homer Simpson in that, that meme when he hot back in the bushes when everything is kind of getting too hot and he don't want to deal with it no more. No, I think if there's something yeah. you want to do, do it. But if you're not going to do it, don't come back and do it again. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know. Like, LeBron, I'm I'm really shocked that LeBron James, as of right now, did not endorse any politician. Like, how heavy he was yeah. going against Trump, which was to me was crazy because 
How could you go? How could the face of your league go against the president of the United States? That is crazy. That's half of the people in the country voted for that person. So that means you turn yeah. your back on half of the people in this country to go against this politician for whatever you thought. That's crazy. That's like Tom Brady going against Barack Obama during that time. Yeah, but at the same time, though, uh, the NBA is a more liberal league. Yeah. I don't think that would have flied very well if, if he was a football player, right? The football the football league is very conservative. I mean, you, you could look at it in the commercials that are playing during games, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's definitely like targeting a conservative audience, and which is why it makes perfect sense for something like that comment to be made by a football player, right? And, they, and football too tends to have a exert a lot of control over its players. So you a lot of things you can and can't do. Um, basketball. Basketball At players one time, have a the NBA freedom. was like that as well. I mean, all right, I'll give you a perfect example. So when Colin Kaepernick was kneeling, you notice nobody in nobody in the NBA kneeled because it was something in the collective bargain agreement saying that they cannot protest during the national mm. anthem because of uh, Chris Jackson, which changed his name to Madhu Abdul Roof. He used to pray to Allah, so he's always you know praying during the national anthem, and that got a lot of um, pushback back in the early 90s. So they put mm. in the collective bargain agreement, you cannot do no protest against the national, during the national anthem. So that's why those players never kneeled. So there, there's little subtle things like that, why they can and cannot do certain things. But during COVID, they took it away because, one, nobody's in the stands, so nobody's going to push back during what they're doing. And at that time, I guess it was the right side of history to, quote, unquote, kneel for injustices, even though it didn't make a difference, in my opinion. But that was so maybe that's it that. then. Maybe, maybe you just touched on something as far as being on the right side of history. If 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 whatever it is that you are vocalizing, right? If it's a part of the approved messages at that time, you get no heat. But yeah. if it goes off script, that's when we're going to give you some problems. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this comment. I'm going to put this up real quick. He said, uh, Shout out to my brother. He said, these athletes are young. Attention spans are shorter these days. Causes mm. are more about what's viral at the moment. I, I yeah. can see that. And I think yeah. right now, you know, there are people who are supporting Trump openly. And they don't want to mess up their bottom line. So it's, mm. it's better to say nothing than say who you support, whether it's Trump or Harris. Because mm. it's no know, different Trump than a job, right? Like too. some. Go ahead. I said Trump supporters buy sneakers too. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's no different than a job. If you, if you, uh, you know, if you know how your employer leans, right, and you start going off script on that, you know, you mm-hmm. you run the risk of getting fired. I mean, great. before we continue with the content, man, make sure you guys hit the like button and follow Broken Traditions wherever you find this content. At. Also, I want to give a special shout out to the Broken Tradition channel members, the, the Tradition Breakers. We got some new people who join the Tradition Breakers. Uh, appreciate you guys for joining, helping me out, helping keep the lights on for Broken Traditions. We're going to have an exclusive uh, podcast recording, right? So what we do here is we have online podcast recordings. We're going to have a special guest on. So you guys get to see the behind the scenes and see, you know, we have these great conversations with other content creators and you guys also have input in the comments. That's for channel members on. So if you guys want to join the Tradition Breakers, Hit the link in the show notes, and after that, you could become a channel member and get the exclusive content when we have other people come on. All right, let's continue on with this episode. Would be, what would be the uh, the push? I actually, do you think athletes should be more vocal than no. what they are right now currently? No, I think I think what they're doing now, this new direction of shut up and droop. I think this is better to me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because unfortunately. Not every athlete is really informed on social justice issues and political issues. They get their information the same way your friends, your favorite presidential candidate get his information through through the internet, right? So yeah. I know you guys always say how Donald Trump get his information through the internet, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. And I think the- <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, I, if you, if I just, I just want him to stop. That's it. That's, <laughs> but it's, that's, it's that's all, I'm, I'm a simple like, man. I just, that's it. <laughs> but to see, you know, uh, um, a political, I mean, to see an entertainer get the information off the internet 
and not have no real informed information and spread that information out to the millions of followers and subscribers is problematic. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. very problematic because you're spreading false information. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, for me, right? When the story came out about Breonna Taylor and mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. the information was coming out, especially from, you know, athletes, entertainers, who, whoever, saying that this woman got shot five times in the bed. And I'm like, damn, that's crazy. You know, this is stuff I've seen athletes and entertainers repost and say verbatim. She got five, mm-hmm. she got shot five times in the bed from a, um, a no-knock warrant, which sounds crazy. Sounds like a hit. Like, they banged in the door, went to her bedroom, shot her five times. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's yeah. crazy. So now the real story comes out of, you know, they did have a no-knock warrant, but her boyfriend went to the door, shot at the cops first, and she gets shot five times. It becomes so, more like, complicated. A, yes. And now it makes more mm-hmm. sense. But now we also didn't open up the Pandora's box of how he shoots and she gets shot five times. Like, did he use as a shield? Like, it's a lot of different things. Asking that questions. And then, too, her involvement with her ex, who yes. is not really an ex because she's still kind of messing with him on the side a little bit. Yeah. It starts getting really messy. She's paying his phone bill. Yeah, you know, he, they end up sending another squad rented, over there to her spot. Yeah, she rented a car for right. him, and the car had a dead body in it, and it was a lot of things. It starts that getting was murky. Not, yeah, it's a lot of things that was not put into that story. But the way that these people who got the information the same way Donald Trump get his information start spreading this information, I'm like, that's very irresponsible. Um, the same story. This, I think, this is the last thing. The last thing that LeBron James did, I guess, as social justice political was when he put the, a picture of the police officer who shot that girl. I think he, sh- he shot the girl in her neck. And mm-hmm. LeBron James put the picture of the police officer and said, enough is enough, not knowing the whole story on how that girl was about to kill another girl, and he stopped that other girl from getting killed because he killed the oh, girl yeah. who was trying to kill mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was like, mm-hmm. you're not getting the full story. You're going off a quick reaction instead of, let me get the information, let me be more informed. You know, we should have more accountability for the athletes or entertainers, whoever, who posting these things. Cause they use us they use the social media the way the same way we are, but they're using it with a bigger platform. And I think that's very irresponsible. Like you and Yeah, I, that, that's the bigger part, right? Like, yeah, it's, when it's, we post content, they're essentially we doing what we're information. doing. Yeah. We yeah. try to get information, we try to gather uh, gather things to be more logical and more reasonable, right? Shout out to logic and reason. And when we do hey. that, it's <laughs> but when we do that, it makes more sense as like, are you got real good details within your information? Somebody just posted a random picture of a cop that you don't know the whole story, the background to, that's sloppy. Yeah, it, it's so I'm 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 torn in this subject because you, you bring up some good points. And I and I think as an athlete, as a person who has a platform, you unfortunately do have to be more responsible than the average Joe because of the platform, right? So even though you're a normal person like everyone else is, and especially today, you know, we're really quick to respond to things and mm-hmm. we're not patient to to wait, right? It, it takes time to develop a story. It takes time to interview people. And and we just don't have the interest to to wait for these stories to really kind of come open. At the same time, I do question the public's uh, just desire. I don't know if it's a desire is the right adjective, but this need to want to follow at a celebrity, like the influence that a person who has a platform has over your mm-hmm. own intellect um, is, is kind of what concerns me because then it means that that person can literally say whatever. If, if someone gives them the right amount of money, and they say, look, we want you to promote dogs, right? It, uh, puppies in particular. We want you to be an advocate for puppies. And you had zero opinion on puppies. Mm-hmm. But because LeBron James is now a puppy advocate, you, by osmosis, now become a puppy advocate. I'm going to buy a puppy. I'm going to buy a puppy. Now. Oh, he's, yeah, this is, oh, okay. It's a really good cause. Okay, you know, let, me get, make, let me get a puppy. Really yeah. So that's the thing. I, I mean, and... It's one thing as a child having that because you haven't really taken the time to develop your your own uh, your your own personality, your own value system, and things of that nature. But as an adult person, I imagine everybody's gone through the due diligence of figuring out self, right? 
do do I actually care about puppies? Why am I? His opinion is his, right? Like you mm-hmm. Too much credit. Well, I mean, I this is this, I guess it is a it is a uh, it's not realistic. I know people in in general operate like this, but it's something I question because it's like you know I, how how do we make good decisions if if essentially all it really takes is you just need to have enough money to influence the populace, then everything's fake. No, no, no movement is really real because it's just inflated by an influencer. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it a real actual problem that people truly actually care about? Or is it just something that everybody's parroting? I think it's something that everybody's parroting. In a lot of cases, I mean, you, you, why I love to have you on because you gave a lot of great points of like, you know, how you want to vote. Like, I think you said something about um, abortion rights. You like I'm mm. very selective with my seed. I don't care about abortion. You know, not to say you don't care about it, but it's not something that's concerning you. You know what I'm saying? So that means you making yeah. informed decisions on your lifestyle. I think a lot of people care about other things because they're told to care about it. I really do think it, it's the parenting thing. It's the uh, the echo chamber that we just love to be in, you know, yes. um, like, for example, um, I guess what's a, a political talking point that's going on right now that people just feel some type of way about? Is it like, I mean, you probably know better than me because you guys do more political. I mean, Im- immigration is, is, is a huge thing hey, next abortion. to yeah. abortion is probably number one, but number two is probably immigration. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. Cause I do feel some type of way about immigration, but at the same time, um, is it affecting my day to day? I mean, like in Atlanta, I see legal, uh, or legal or illegal migrants coming into Atlanta. Like not as much as New York City, not as much as Chicago. I mean, um, are you guys seeing it in Texas? Yeah, Houston's labeled as a sanctuary say, uh, city. Okay. So we we have well, we've been taking on people for a while, right? It, it's uh Yeah. We have a whole mix of variety. This is why like when people are kind of limited to just Mexican in Houston, you know, the Mexican population is is actually shrinking a little bit. You know, we get we get a lot of Venezuelans, uh we get a lot of people from Colombia, Panama, like all these different country, uh, South American countries. They're all I guess labeled as Hispanic, but yeah, the cultures are different, mm-hmm. right? But yeah, and because also, we're closer to the border, you know, we we, we get all these. I mean, the the border is a massive issue here because we we have a large chunk of it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and depending on where you are, right? If you are if you live closer to the border, like say the valley, right? Let's say you live maybe in Corpus, yeah. Um, you might look at things a little differently because it's like okay, uh, we have. A lot of attention being spent on the border. Uh, maybe a lot of the people who work in this city work in immigration. They're exhausted. They're stressed out. There are all these different things. You know, it, it's a hassle because there was a point in time where you could go back and forth between you know Mexico and the U.S. because uh, there was a couple of bars inside and it was cheaper. So you, know, yeah. you go over across the border. You know, you have yourself a good time and then you come back. Mm-hmm. Now there's all these different things in place. Now you, you might run the risk of not being able to re-enter back into the country, and so you know you don't wow. want to make those moves. Run yeah, into the cartels or anything. Run into the cartels. A black woman died because she was trying to get some uh, medical, because you know medical tourism is is really big in Mexico, especially along the yeah. border. Mm-hmm. And so you know she died because she got she was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and uh, you know that that that's, the whole area is hot right now. Yeah, I hate to be like that, but you. You were polite in saying medical tourism, but uh, <laughs> I wasn't. for me, I'm like, this is a non, uh, what did they call it? It wasn't a, it was, a, it was a, um, she wanted, she did a procedure, she didn't need to. She, to be a BBL, right? she was getting a BBL. I, I was trying to make sure the conversation stayed on task. You know, I, I didn't want to derail. <laughs> See, this is the the BBL is a whole different you. issue. <laughs> oh man, see, yes. <laughs> and they want to put her under the bus she like that. It, it wasn't about her. Okay, it wasn't about her. She, yes, no, that's, that's a whole. Other. I <laughs> Medical tourism. I, I, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> she caught me. She. I was trying to be nice. You were. I was trying to be nice. I don't know why. No. She was going to do an unnecessary procedure. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word. It was a BBL. Yes. 
<laughs> That's hilarious because <laughs> yeah. I, was, <laughs> I mean, no, it's not hilarious that she got killed, right? But it's hilarious no, no, how you try to uh, frame it. You know, you know. Mel, thank you. I mean, I, 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 I try. I try to be nice. You know, I, I don't. I don't know what she's going through. Maybe she really needed a man, and she, this is what she had to do. This, this is the cards that she had to play. I don't know. I don't know her life like that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, but in but if you live in Dallas, right, you're yeah. further north. You know, Dallas has less of the the South Americans. Their Hispanic population is predominantly Mexican, and so mm-hmm. you know their their situation is a little different, right? Uh, California is also a little different. Now, it's weird because California, people have a weird, almost a racist way of, of talking about this issue because uh, in the immigration thing, they always refer to the folks who are picking strawberries and, and picking, you know, uh, the vegetables and stuff. Yeah. And those are predominantly Mexicans. Those aren't the people who are that Trump's talking about as far as like yeah. who are causing murders and raping people and things of that nature. That's right. That is a South American, specifically Venezuelan uh, issue. But they lumped everybody together. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. They're always lumping people. Uh, so I don't know. It, it, it looks like they, they, yeah, go ahead. They do lump. Excuse me. Oh God! Damn. Okay, so they do lump people together, but I think they are also trying to separate themselves within themselves. So, like, a lot of Latinos that I know who support Trump is like, I'm not that Latino that is coming across the border that is doing stuff stuff illegally. Also, uh, somebody who coming across the border who are just working a regular job, trying to get themselves up, trying to go whatever asylum uh, assistance they could get, and trying to become a citizen. I think those people are trying to separate themselves from all the street gang and street activity if they could, because there's a lot of different layers that goes to it. But I think they are trying to separate themselves. And I think that the people who came here legally are against the people who come in here illegally. And the people who come in here as asylum seekers are just trying to put their head down and work. But the, they all get lumped together. But I think within themselves, they're trying to do the separation so that separation could seek out to the masses so that we can see the difference among the people. I think that's what they're trying to do. And so to kind of bring it full circle, because that, that's a great point. That makes sense. It, it, it does make sense. And so then my question is, you know, this would be a great opportunity for Luka Doncic to talk about immigration, yeah. you know, uh, and the issues with that. This would be, you know, where is uh, Jokic? Oh, to say like there's other Drakage. other places that people are. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, this this is if if they if they were more vocal about this, this would be an excellent time for them to say, hey, look, you know, we're not all the same. Some of us are actually here, you know, contributing to society. I mean, they're not they're not trying to be citizens. At least I don't think that they have vocalized that. Uh, they they're still citizens of their country, yeah. but they're coming here, you know, with a visa. I imagine they do their work, they play basketball, and then they go back home. That's a good point. I, I, another person I just thought about in real time was Joel Embiid. So Joel Embiid is from um, yeah. Cameroon, right? Cameroon. And now mm-hmm. he's now in the States. He actually played for the United States in the Olympics. So he's a full citizen. Yeah, I think he, yeah, yeah, he changed the citizenship. Or does he have yeah, dual? She, Cameroon doesn't make you a, what do you call it, denounce the other one. Okay. So I don't, so I don't know, though. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but now that, I guess that could be a good spokesperson for immigration i mean if, if to to your point right to to help because essentially what you did is give more insight into the situation right J- mm-hmm. just to bring in more perspective so it's just not completely dominated by one narrative and and you happen by by you i mean Jamo, uh, joel Embiid, you have a more intimate relationship with this you can speak on this, right? You be like, hey, look, you know, you guys are kind of welling out on this issue. You know, this immigration thing encompasses a lot of people. You know, it's, it's you know, I happen to be one of these folks, right? And I mm-hmm. came here a legal way, yada, yada. Some of us are like me who are coming to try to do, get my documents, do my do my thing. You know, that so that there's a missed opportunity there. But yeah, I think Joel is a, is a great, uh, and then uh, y- uh, Giannis. Yeah, Giannis is another one. Yeah. We got a bunch of folks here. Uh, uh, shoot, uh, Wimbanyama. Yeah. He's in France. Mm-hmm. You're right. There's a lot of them. That's just mm-hmm. the NBA. We're not even talking about NFL, all the P 
people from the NFL yeah. from Nigeria. Like the NFL got a real big Nigeria culture. But yeah, like a lot of people from yeah. the NFL. Yeah, like, you one. Yeah. But it's I guess. But it, I guess it also have to be a hot talking. Well, I think immigration is a hot talking point. But I think for Joel and B or Luca or Giannis or anybody or Jokic to put their name out there for immigration, knowing how, I guess, the majority of the country may feel about immigration, would they do that? Would they put you know their name on the line for something as as strong as immigration? I don't think they would. I don't think they would. Like Adam Silver already like warned them or something. I don't know. It's true. It, it could. It's hard to get into another person's head on that because it could be a variety of different reasons. I mean, it, it could be simply like I'm not trying to mess up my visa, so I'm gonna go ahead and just shut up and I'm just going to shut, shut up and dribble. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I, but I have a, I have another scenario for you guys. That's a hot mm-hmm. talk, a hot okay. topping point, a hot talking point. Um, abortion, right? Yep. How come we're not seeing too many WNBA players vocally speaking about Ooh. women's wow. bodies' rights? Wow. If it is the thing about women's rights. That's very interesting. That's a good point. I mean, that's very you know interesting. A- Aja Wilson, she's not saying nothing. Uh, what's another? Um, Caitlin Clark, she's not saying anything. Yep. Um, Kelsey Aja, Plum, Brianna, St- all these players. Cameron. That is. Mm-hmm. They're not saying anything about nothing. And that's when I really realized it, because they were very vocal during the, um, I guess, the social justice years, right? During the George Floyd. Mm-hmm. So they were very vocal. They might have been, mm-hmm. if not as vocal, but more vocal than the NBA. Like, they had that Jacob Blake T-shirt. You know, they were very vocal about all the things that was going on. Mm-hmm. They're not saying nothing about abortion. That's cra- that, That's what really kind of sparked it, like, I'm like and uh, equal pay, that. right? They've been they've been on equal pay for several years now. Yeah, right. Going on different podcasts. Uh, I know. Uh, was it Draymond Green had a fight with? Was it Candace Parker on a podcast with? Because uh, Candace was talking about equal pay, and Draymond was like, "Yo, you're not bringing in as much money as we are." So <laughs> you know, so, as, I mean, as he was just being real about it. Yeah, they're not bringing in no money. Like, I think the WNBA <laughs> never... No, literally, the WNBA oh, never God. made a profit. <laughs> since they existed. Oh, that's, yeah, that's true, though. That's correct. Oh, never God. made a profit? But, yeah, I mean, so he, he, they... It's interesting. You, you, you bring up a good point. Because if y'all were really on the equal pay thing, I consider that to be a woman's rights issue. Abortion is, is, has been lumped into that as well. I imagine y'all would be straight for that. But I wonder, I'm not sure if, uh, man, that's a good, I don't know why that's the case. That's an excellent point. Because I was thinking, well, maybe it's because they're not really interested in, uh, I guess, the physical health stuff, uh, reproductive health. right? You don't really yeah. hear too many times of them talking about you know, children or not having children. or you know, It's usually a situation, I mean, the only time I really thought about that was uh, Brittany Griner. Who was basically trying oh. to? She was trying to act like a pookie because hey. she forced she she convinced her ex wife to get pregnant, and then after they got divorced, that's your baby now. So yeah. you go ahead and handle that. You're gonna be a great single mom. So wow. <laughs> that's twins. I think it was twins. It was twins? Yeah, oh, that's even worse. Then, that's even worse. Like, Those are my kids. They are mine, and she's not. She's not wrong. Technically speaking, those are that's wow. Similar. You didn't use my egg. <laughs> And I don't. I don't know how that slides through. And she wanted us to be together. And I was in nah, family. Dude. I didn't tell her, promise her all that. Shoot. I'm like, why don't they show up? For You're gonna be a great single mom. They keep showing her with her new wife and all this stuff. I'm like, no. That's wild. She and she was and there was a police re- record, like a police call and stuff. Where uh-huh. she's like, oh, I got something for you. We get in the house. I'm like, oh. Yeah, uh, she's over here beating on folks. See, yeah, but she can get I, away I know with Bridget Grinder had domestic violence um, situations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. She can get away with that though. She was a man. Mm-mm. None of that would fly. But that's why I'm like, it. do you think that's acting like a man? Like, is is that why she's like, why uh, is she behaving like that? And then they don't, they no one says nothing. I'm a default to you on that one. You're you're the resident woman in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, they decided after her Russia experience that we we're going to feel sorry for her, and she's a sweet black woman, you know, flower. So now I'm like, okay, there we go. But but the bringing Brian of domestic violence and. Being a pookie was before Russia. 
Yeah, it was before Russia. It was before Russia. You're right. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know why they didn't they didn't talk about that at all before. Maybe that Russia really beat that out of her. Like maybe maybe that's what so happened. Maybe she actually is a delicate flower. She now. got reformed. Maybe. Maybe. That got that she Russia tree. Box that off. Too. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, so tell them what happened. Another country said, "No, I don't want to be a man anymore." <laughs> You know what? I, I, I had this all wrong. Let me go ahead and yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and chill out a little bit. I had this. Where's America at? Let me let me get back over there. Let me be quiet. Let me, you know, yeah. let me just stay low key now. You're right. I was balling out. But yeah, I'm, 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 I'm I'll give you another example that. of somebody who should, I guess, be vocal about a candidate. It should be Brittany Griner. Did um, Biden and Harris get her back home? They got you out. Because. Yeah. <laughs> Cause let's let's not act. Vocal. She needs to be on that campaign trail. Yes. Like yes, that's a, that's they're always that's an excellent stars. point. Always they stuff. traded that's the Merchant of Death mm-hmm. for Brittany Griner. Yes, you got traded. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a sacrifice. Wow. Someone else had to wait a little longer. They had to tell the other family, "Oh no, we're not getting your sorry. Your dad out. We're gonna get Griner. We're getting her. Yeah. And, and she's not the best on her team, and she got that type of treatment. And she hadn't stayed as long as the other people who were waiting in Russia. No. No. Yeah. Yeah, you would think you would. I mean, she's a so the celebrity thing, right? So basically, what we learned is you can be a military official doing your job, <laughs> get kidnapped, and a celebrity can get kidnapped too, and they're gonna get out before you do because because she was a celebrity. She could she elected to come here. You mm-hmm. were here because of your job. Yeah. Same with the journalists. They were there with their job. Right. So. Yeah. But you know, we're going to get her though. We're going to get her first. But the crazy part about it and she was like, "Oh, I had to go there to make enough money to feed my family." Brittany trying to make mm. a quarter million a year playing basketball for 4 months out of the year. Wow. Now now you you point out the fact that how much money she's making. I'm pointing out the fact of what family. Before we continue on Make sure you join the Broken Traditions Book Club. Broken Traditions Book Club. We are learning about Black culture within Black culture, online meetings every two weeks, rereading great books. The first book that we're going to read is the one behind me right here, uh, American Sirens. This book is about the first paramedics in America who were Black men. Not the first Black paramedics, the first men who were paramedics. This is great history. I want to read books that give us a sense of pride. Are you guys interested in joining the broken traditions book club is free to join see the barcode scan the barcode or hit the link in the show notes all right let's continue on <laughs> <laughs> what, what what are we talking about <laughs> what's what family you speak of you a family of you a family of one that's crazy oh man that's a whole <laughs> damn. You your family. hey you a deadbeat Domestic violence. Hey, abuser. hey look, Mel, Mel does not let anybody slide. <laughs> she she says anybody can get it. I, abuser. Hey, I like the way Laurent put it too. Yeah. I you're you're cooking right now. Go ahead. Like I, I'm sitting back. No. You got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> That's all I got. No, I, mean, no, I got to go to this comment. Maybe she should actually shut up and dribble, but. She <laughs> <laughs> what well, other athlete has right. that kind of trade value? Hey, that's what I'm saying. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's insane. Oh my good. god. That was a really good comment. <laughs> you can't make this make sense. You can't. But yeah, well, she should be the number sense. one advocate for yes. um Harris and Trump. Or just Harris. Absolutely. I mean mm-hmm. Harris, yeah, yeah Harris, I'm saying Harris and Trump, Harris and Biden. Just Harris, mm-hmm. like she should be the number one advocate. Right there, with Harris tattoo. I wouldn't on be her here back. today if it wasn't for Biden. Yeah, I yep. think I think she should get a Kamala Harris tattoo on her back or her, or her shoulder. Mm-hmm. Just <laughs> yeah, to fit. yeah well, she we should. Keep asking Kamala, like, oh, what are you doing right now with your? But uh, while you're already in office, she could she could talk about that. We've already done a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't bring that up as a political yeah. talking point. I got Brittany Griner back yeah. home. Because <laughs> she oh, wanted to vote. <laughs> Can you imagine? Out of all the reasons, that's that's why you know, it doesn't make it. Man, that's not America. And maybe in front of a specific audience. If she's in front of black women, then she could say that. But here's the other thing I didn't understand. Not to completely go off on a tangent here, but oh, no, God, you good. Where's, the spatial, where's the spatial awareness? Like, 
you know Russia has issues with America. Right. Right. When she got locked up, things were brewing between Russia and Ukraine. Right. Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to play basketball in a country that has known issues with the country you come from and whispers of them potentially going to war with somebody? And then you carry weed. And then you carry weed. Like what? All these things make no sense. Like, what are you what are you doing? A Do recipe not, for disaster. It's that I mean, American just, privilege. Yes. I remember last year there were a few stories of black women wild now going overseas and I want people to enjoy themselves. Go travel. But then they go over there, act a fool and get arrested or get kicked out. You know. This this is why I said medical treatment, because <laughs> you can go all in on black women. And I'll let you do that. I can't say these things. Okay. I, I, I don't have the privilege to say that stuff. Okay, they're gonna attack me and eat me alive. You, on the other hand, is that normal behavior? If you go to was it Dubai? Was it was Dubai. Dubai. It was yeah. Dubai. She and she rented a, a rented a car. Yep. And you're screaming at the folks at the rental car agency. Yeah. I. They scream at us. What's the difference? Listen, I am <laughs> one to actually tell people, you know, tear them up and down. This is my money. You know, you need to have this service. It says right here in the contract. I read the entire thing. I was deprived of my rights. But you don't start screaming at folks in a different country that you don't even respect the language or the culture or anything like that. There are other ways. I know I know where to do that. You know, like, I do that here. <laughs> <laughs> I do that here. No, seriously, before, as the Black Lives Matter thing started uh, ramping up, and I remember my parents would be like, no, please, like, if the police pull you over, just, you know, don't say anything and all this stuff, because they know... I'm always like, I know my rights. Come on, like you tell me stuff. Yeah, you're a little feisty. But you go, mm-hmm. wow. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. You want to call me feisty? <laughs> Was there any lies told? <laughs> no, no. no, no. <laughs> if I have to be, otherwise I'm pretty chill. Okay. Yes. So, I'm not trying to go in on black women. But they need to have, have more awareness. No one's I trying agree. to stop you from enjoying your life and going mm-hmm. other places. But you do that... And then also, I wouldn't have such an issue if you do that and you go over there and you find your way back and you, you handle your business. You go over there and now you start crying in jail. So we have to come bail you out. <laughs> like this guy said, who has other kind of trade value? No, seriously, if you want to get into shit, at least, you know, can I, can I sound like a T.I. son for a minute? I can stay out of business. You know what I'm <laughs> no, if I get into jail, I can get myself out. <laughs> or I'm willing to, you know, be like, all right, well, I, I, I have to... It's time for me to pay up. I'll sit in jail. I know I did. I was wrong. And so, but y'all start crying. You have this whole thing. We had to watch award shows. I don't know what award they gave her when she came back. Uh, yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. Even though it was an abusive. <laughs> yeah, that, that happened. Wife beater. Yeah. You know, deadbeat. Mm. This is your representative for the WNBA, and you wonder why you know people don't want to watch. Hey. I, I just sit back Maybe sometimes. Maybe moved on to other <laughs> 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 excuse, excuse the male rant. This is now I'm down. That's good. It's good. I love it. <laughs> Angela, I went, up on, Angela, I went and talked so much on Breakfast Club. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. You guys can talk. It's their show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I, want, I want to pivot to another point that I want to uh, bring up. <laughs> I was trying to think, like, damn, how can I follow that up? So, <laughs> okay, I got now, to let me ask you, do you think, both of y'all, let me ask you, do you think um, Muhammad Ali um, Muhammad Ali, what he did, or that era that Muhammad Ali was doing what he was doing is that a reason why the athletes try to be more than an athlete? Because they want to recreate that love that Muhammad Ali got back then when he was doing the things that he was doing that was needed and the things that he lived through? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. trying to say how can I question that? Or do you understand what I'm talking about? Or Yeah, I, I think uh, that pursuit is very difficult because Muhammad Ali was going through very real physical barriers, right? Like, yes. he, we don't live in that time period, right? We, we might have some things that we have issues with, but, you know, when you are getting disrespected in interviews, when you tell people what your name is and they're continually trying to call you Cassius Clay, 
after you've yeah. already told them that's not my name anymore, right? Yes. When you fight for the country at one of the biggest stages in the Olympics and you come back thinking you're going to get all this praise because you beat all these people and you you brought home a gold just to realize that you're still an N-word, right? Like yeah. that's that's still what you are and people are still spitting on you. Like these are real things that are just so in your face every day that you can't help but be vocal. Right. Right. See, we don't that's the, we don't have that's, we don't have that no more. Yeah. It's, no, well, let me say this. The athletes don't have what Muhammad they're not going through what Muhammad Ali went through to be no. so passionate about it because Muhammad Ali was going through what everyday black everyday black men was going through in real time. So yes. I'll give you a perfect example, and this pissed me off, and I said this on somebody else's show. Um LeBron James <laughs> LeBron somebody painted a uh, racial slur on LeBron LeBron James Gate in California, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. I remember and that. Yep. Before before he got home, he didn't physically see it, but they washed it off before he got home. And LeBron James said in an interview, I know how Mammy Till feels. Even though people hide their faces and will say things um, about you and when, when they see you, they smile on your face. Um, it's alive every single day. And um, and I think back to Emmett Till's mom, actually. It's kind of one of the first things I thought of. And, and the reason that she had an open casket is because she wanted to show the world um, what her son went through as far as a hate crime and, you know, being black in America. And I'm like, what? whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I know how Mamie <laughs> Till feels. <laughs> that's, that's, come on now. Come on and now. Like, let's let's not. It's like you. That's not even drawing straws. That's just that's just straight up disrespect. Straight up disrespect of you know wow. how Mamie Till feels about her son going to no. Mississippi and getting tortured, lynched, and killed. Then you got some spray paint that you didn't even see with your physical eyes. You was told about yes. on your gate, mm -hmm. and. We don't even know if it's true or not because people were manufacturing racism at that time just to keep that narrative going. So we don't even know if it's yes, true. Yes. But for you to say, yeah. you know what Mamie Till felt like? Mm -hmm. I think the whole race and culture should have turned his back on LeBron James for saying that. Oh, yeah. I mean, you the closest you can get to that is when your son had that heart issue and he almost died on the court. But he didn't die, though. So and he didn't get lynched. There's, or and he didn't get lynched or beat. <laughs> Or like, the people who who killed him got free. out the house. And it didn't happen because he was... He right? Was like, like, there's so many things to that that whole story. I wouldn't have touched that at all. Like, it's like it, that had nothing to do with what you had, what, what, what experience there. But I think a part of it was he was trying to push some type of emotional button, right? To try yeah. to solicit some type of response, mm -hmm. which is completely irresponsible because that completely tried... It, it doesn't diminish that story. But to the uneducated... Who don't know the story of Emmett Till? They're like, oh wow, that's it's just like no, it's not just as bad. <laughs> Emmett Till's far worse. Uh, I don't know how many people has anyone really experienced anything close to that. I mean, Malcolm X lost his dad uh, through a lynch, but he didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, no, I just I, you don't I touch mean, things like that. I mean, that's Emmett Till's story is a it's a story that basically sparked the civil rights movement. You talking about? Somebody yeah. spray painting something, allegedly uh, spray painting something on your gate. And you know how this woman feels? No. But out of touch. Out of touch. So to your point, really to your point, to your point yeah, you know, Muhammad Ali was in touch. Right. He was experiencing things as everyone else was. He went to jail for not going to Vietnam. Right. So he, he yes. is oh, everything else that's happening to everyone else. He's also experiencing this stuff as well. It doesn't matter how much money he has. It doesn't matter how much fame he has. It couldn't stop him from being black, right? Mm -hmm. To your point, LeBron James is, uh, I'm going to say he's not black, but he he is rich first. Yeah. Celebrity first. But that's, that's yes. the comment I thought you were about to bring up was because he said something to the effect of realizing that even though he had all this money, that he's still black. Like he got his black card. Yeah. Because he was so, and that shows how far he was removed from this whole thing. But when that happened with the spray paint, he made some comment like that. That's a good point. It could have been him realizing, oh, shoot, I am actually black. I thought I made enough money to ascend from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
But that's if it happened. Yeah, I don't even believe it happened. You're not, you don't believe it happened? No. You think it's cap? Yeah, it, it was at a time where manufactured, I mean, racism was being manufactured. It was being made like at a GMO farm, like Bill Gates yeah. making tomatoes. It was just fake <laughs> stuff that happened. And I'm like, what? Like, this doesn't make sense. It, it, it was like, like every week okay. there was a real crazy racist story. I'm like, mm. this is not 1940. Yeah. This is not that time. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's like, mm-hmm. I, I just didn't see it. And I think they needed that manufactured racism to drive in the narrative of whatever they wanted to drive in. I think that's what, that was the yeah. goal. Yeah, going back to your original um, question on it, that's what I think they were trying to make some other story, making uh, different goals with making those stories. But also when they're trying to evoke a response or solicit some kind of feeling with the audience or with their fans, like, oh, Mm -hmm. I'm like Muhammad Ali. People want to have the same kind of greatness and imagery alongside him and other um, great names and black leaders. But it's like you're not going to be able to go through what they went through. No, and and you know, with the societal problems today, you can't. You're not there. You're not. Yeah, it, it's they. They weren't trying to be the person that they became. Mm-hmm. Oh, That's yeah. the biggest difference. You're trying to be a Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was just trying to live. Yeah, mm-hmm. like he, he he wasn't trying to be Muhammad Ali. He he was dealing with real stuff, and he's like, man, I'm tired of this. Like it, and he was just trying to fight to just be a normal human. You don't have those same problems. Like that's it's impossible for us today to c- become something like that because we just don't yeah, have the I, same fight with the, with that when that description that Mel just gave I think the perfect person that was close to it the closest that we've seen in our lifetime is Ky- Kyrie Irving Kyrie Irving did not yes. want to go through what he went through he did not manufacture yep. that he all he did was make a post and his life started all, all he did was like you know I don't want to get vaccinated he was a perfect person that didn't Boom. want to go through what he went through yep. Like, even Kyla mm-hmm. Kaepernick, you know, I think Kyla Kaepernick wanted to bring awareness to, to um, police brutality. And I think it kind of got out of control, way out of control than what he wanted to be. But I don't think, you know, I think he's close to it. But I think Kyrie Irving would be the closest one to Muhammad Ali if we had to compare this generation to that generation. And that, that's the, the trend, right? That's the, like, you think of Nelson Mandela, right? Mm-hmm. Nelson Mandela didn't want to go to jail for 40 years. No, like that that wasn't a part of the plan. Like, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna sit here in this jail. I'm gonna move yeah. these rocks for 40 years, and then and then I'm gonna become president. No, that wasn't. It wasn't like that at all. Like, it, it's and I think so. I guess maybe the generation because I know one of the, com- the the people in the comment section was mentioning that you know the younger folks are uh, have the shorter attention spans and things of that nature. I think to add to that, uh, this clout chasing thing uh, mm-hmm. is also a problem. And so we we want to be a somebody. Yeah. For for I guess for selfish reasons, like it's because uh, you know I, I think whatever they whatever they think the perceived benefits are of becoming a somebody, mm-hmm. versus the people who we admire today weren't trying to be somebodies. They were just trying to either live. Or they were trying to actually fight something that was real. That you know that they personally were connected to. You know, mm-hmm. uh, if I'm pretty sure if you would have asked. Martin Luther King, if there was another way for you to live past, you know, however long, you know, how old he was before he died, he probably said, yeah, it would be nice if I could, you know, live past 80. But, yeah. you know, this is what I have to do right now. This is this is what this is what it is. I, I remember um, going back to Malcolm X because I'm kind of going through his autobiography right now. Mm-hmm. There was a moment where he was being interviewed and this was when he left the Nation of Islam. He was saying some things that they didn't like. And, you know, he had all these death threats on him and stuff like that. And the guy's like, how do you live with all this, you know, you know, the threat of essentially, you know, you losing your life any day because of all this stuff. And he looked outside and you know, he saw a bird and he was just like, you know, that bird doesn't fly without God's permission. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm I'm doing this outside of myself. Right. Like whatever that is, it'll take care of itself. Like I'm. I'm yeah. I'm doing what I was basically called to do. Like this is this is what my fight is, and whenever my time is done here, it'll be done. But it won't be done before that point. That type of outlook on life. I mean, do we do we have people who think like that today, especially athletes? 
Oh, no, 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 no. I think no athlete is thinking like that. Yeah. So, so yeah, you won't you won't have a, a Muhammad Ali. No. They're on a different wavelength. Yeah. That that old generation. And it's like, I don't know if you ever saw the picture of Kyle Kaepernick did a reincarnate, a reenacting of the picture of Muhammad Ali with the kids. And it's like, mm. you're not that, bro. Like, I get no. it, but you're not that. And why would you? Why would you even want to do that? Because do you see anybody else trying to be? See, but that's see you're doing things for the wrong reason. That because you did you mm-hmm. see anybody else trying to be anybody else? Because Martin Luther King said that Mahatma Gandhi was one of his uh, people that he looked up to. Mm-hmm. Was he over here wearing a wearing those you know sorry looking <laughs> thing and shaved his yeah. head? He wasn't doing all that. But he's standing his own grounds. Hmm? Being who he needed to be. I thought, yeah. Gee, that was a great point. I didn't even think about that. It's crazy, yeah. man. It's, 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 uh, I think social media has something to do with it. I mean, social media oh, has, yeah. has something to do with a lot of different things, but, you know, it's, this is why I think we need to really, especially black folks, we really need to be teaching kids history, right? To give them some grounding because mm-hmm. if y'all think that you're like these folks, it's because you don't know these people. Like, like your reality is is a far cry from the things they actually had to go through. Like that's yeah. Let's not kid ourselves. We're not made from that cloth. We might come from it, and maybe some of that remnant of spirit might be in us. Right? We have the potential to tap into it when we need to. Mm-hmm. But they had to live that. Like they yeah. didn't have a choice to not be, or just you know use a athletic abilities to be something else or. No, like you could have been the best in the world and still not get that chance of that shot. Yeah, yeah. You still going to jail? Yep. You know you're still Muhammad, drafted. Like Muhammad Ali went to jail. Yeah. Like in his prime. In his prime. You know, what I'm saying I, that's why I say Kyrie is the closest, not nowhere near it. You know, what I'm saying by a whole country mile, but yeah, it's it's not the same, but it's the closest because he had yeah. to sit out in his prime, playing in Brooklyn because of the vaccine and all that all those things so that's the closest but ain't nobody not nowhere near Muhammad Ali not and I don't care what they post what they do they're not doing nothing to the elk of Muhammad Ali to Jim Brown to um mm-hmm. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar um all these Bill Russell mm-hmm. all these players went through real things yeah they went through real things just to to be the best in the country at what they do and still be considered a second-class citizen. I mean, we at the time now where NBA players, before they get to the NBA, they could be 14, 13 years old, still got the celebrity status because of AAU basketball. It's all mm. like a whole pipeline to get to the NBA. And it's like, you have to be privileged. You have to have money. You have to go through this system. It's no, like, not, not to go on the whole tangent of rant, but there's no more LeBron James coming in the league. Like, uh, a young black kid with a single mother that is so good that his talents got him to that next level. There's so many steps now for you to get to that next level. There's not going to be that era of the gifted athletes that come out the hood no more. That's a good point. And honestly, uh, that kind of, that's, that's kind of related to what we were talking about earlier about like Doncic and things like all these international players coming in. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, there were international players before, but the league has now, be- like, the faces of the league are now becoming international. Like, yes. I guess the closest to, like, a, a Michael Jordan or a LeBron that's coming up maybe might be Anthony Edwards. Maybe. Mm-hmm. He still has some time. But who's, who's the American who's going to be the face of the NBA? Bas- basketball. NBA turning back on America. Once they saw how much money Yao Ming was bringing in, they was like, "We need to get this international dollar." You know, mm. we can have our game still in the in the in the states, but the international dollars, where is it at? And that mm. and it grew going in that direction. But the problem with that direction is there's no more American superstars, like you said, Anthony Edwards, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. Yeah. They're gonna, they, they're gonna they gonna retire know, soon. They about to retire soon. I mean, LeBron is so old; his son is in the league. Yeah, that's how old he is. So, <laughs> it's crazy. so they they're about to retire, and that 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 cloth is gone. 
it's gone. And now it's all these entitled kids. They all about mm-hmm. Instagram. I mean, I've seen a stat of Brandon Ingram and I think um, Anthony Simmons. I think Brandon Ingram hit the game winning shot on Anthony Simmons. And what they have in common, they got the same baby moms. Like, oh, geez. I don't know. This, this, is a, this is a great conversation about, you know, the shut up and dribble. Um, I didn't think about the immigration part. That was a great talking point. The immigration, how some athletes could be advocates for immigration. I think that's a great talking yeah. point because, or, like, or just said, give us some con- more context into it. You know, that's just, yeah, y'all have y'all have more insight into it than because we, we there's so much information, and I, I mentioned this in one of the videos that we made. You know, it, we live in the age of information, but we also live in the age of of just nonsense and and, and misinformation. And so, yeah, you know, for those who know, you know, it would be nice if y'all could speak on you know mm-hmm. these things because because we, we you know a lot of us we might have read something. Right, we might have tried looking it up, but maybe the stuff we read was out of context, or maybe the stuff we read wasn't fully fleshed out because somebody was just trying to just really quickly try to just pump something out there. Right, kind of like the stuff that you were mentioning earlier. Right, yeah. people speaking on things they're not uh, familiar with, and then you have a bunch of just confused people. You could be the person to kind of you know clear up the air. Yeah, but the thing is, I think they. They're, they're happy to be in the States. They don't want to ruffle no feathers. They want to make mm. their money, live their comfortable lives, and just play basketball. They just want to shut up and dribble. Yeah. 